Hello Squirrels and welcome back to PPM6TV. Today what it is, is the SE Electronics SE8, a mic I'm championing as a contender for the best cheap microphone in the world. Now we know on this channel that um, to win that crown, you got to overtake this, which is the Line Audio CM4. And there's a video already up uh, comparing the two, so you ought to check that out. But it's not enough to compete at the affordable end, and both those mics are very, very affordable. You have to, if you're going to be the best cheap mic in the world, take on some of the big boys. And in, in audio and in microphones, it doesn't come any bigger than Neumann. The name of Neumann rings down the generations of fantastic microphones. And the KM184 is an absolute peach. Um, and in fact, in some ways, it is a best cheap microphone. When you think about the alternatives from uh, Sherps or Sennheiser um, or any of the very high-end brands, the Neumann is surprisingly affordable. And so, uh, and its performance is fantastic. And actually the two together should be an interesting battle because um, the SE has that presence lift that the Neumann has that I think gives it the ability to uh, cut through. Now, one thing I missed, shame on me in my CM4 video, is that not only does the SE have pads and um, uh, filters, which neither the CM4 nor the Neumann have, it also has, uh, voila, a detachable replaceable capsule and at the moment this one is uh, fitted with the um, the cardioid but you can also get a um, omni capsule or you can buy the mic with the omni capsule fitted if that's what you want so big boosters to se uh, not only for their uh, facilities and their figures which are frankly very very good indeed but also the versatility of an interchangeable capsule but this is all about the sound so se8 Neumann KM184, have at it. Okay, so here we have the SE8 primed and ready for action. Now, I was thinking to myself, um, which um, of the uh, cheapest mics in the world, the contenders for the throne, as it were, have interchangeable capsules? And that's a really difficult question because, of course, most of them don't. That's usually a feature of more expensive mics. Now, um, the 451 series, I think they're back in production. I don't know. I, I don't have one of the new ones or indeed one of the old ones. Although I, there is a video up there with uh, some of the old ones uh, when I borrowed a, a couple of Terry's venerable 451s. Um, but um, I do have one of these. That's an AKG um, 300B, the blue line. I'm not sure if they're still in production. Uh, I've got some old Austrian ones. I've also got a couple of slightly dubiously shiny Chinese ones. Um, they, of course, have the most magnificent bayonet system in the world, uh, better than any um, better than any screw thread. Um, and they have a larger range of capsules. But, of course, they were out for ages, and, and who knows what SE may be planning in the future. But I just was struck that SE seemed to have... Uh, try to cover all the bases. The facilities you get on the mic, the price, you know, it's very, very affordable. Um, the figures and the versatility. I think they've really pushed the boat out. This is a, a statement of intent, really, from SE about um, how uh, how far they're willing to go to make, uh, you know, all-purpose, high-quality solutions to the dilemma that we all have, which is, uh, you know, we have you can never have enough microphones which one should I spend my money on? And because the price is so affordable, maybe I can have two of these or three of these or four of these or five of these even compared to um, a KM184. Again, none of that matters if what we really want is the highest quality sound and you prefer the sound of the 184. But I think it shows the ambition of SE Electronics. And that, I think, is to be applauded. So well done, SE. Now for your trial. Here comes the 184. And here we have the Neumann KM184, an absolute stone cold classic microphone. Now, when I was young, so much younger than today, um, we had uh, Neumann KM84s, the, uh, the forerunner to the um, uh, 184. I think all of those we had in a kind of... Um, shiny uh, metal finish which inevitably got dented and battered i mean we really did. they were very very popular microphones in the bbc and everybody wanted them i think and correct me if i'm wrong i think they did have replaceable capsules 
and the thread the thread was even finer than that on the AKG 451. So I don't think I ever changed the capsule on one. Um, I may have taken it off just to have a look, but um, the, you were just terrified of of, of cross threading it. Anyway, I notice now that the that the 84 is is a thing. You know, people um, uh, get very excited about 84s. Although, uh, like many bits of those kit now, they're, they're quite ancient. I suppose you get them refurbed. But they were great mics. I really liked them. Although, again, prone to popping and uh, mechanically sensitive, a bit like the, a bit like the, the 184. Um, although these are just, I mean, on, a, on an acoustic guitar, on piano, on, on virtually any instrument, um, these are fantastic mics. And um, I'll be very interested to see if the SE8 is able to live with the uh, uh, the KM184 because very few mics can. Now we're also doing um, off axis on these and uh, this is the 184 at 90 degrees. I think Neumann have a pretty good grip of off axis I've got to say and this might be an area where the 184 really uh, cuts through and shows its pedigree. However it's interesting in the comments uh, on the CM4 video do check that out uh, at least one person mentioned that they thought that the SE8 got the better of the CM4 in the off-axis. I wonder if that's something to do with um, the, the presence boost just pulling in a, a little bit more intelligibility, but uh, which therefore I would say maybe isn't a, a problem so much with the CM4 as a reflection of its choice of um, uh, 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 frequency response. However, what do I know? So uh, that's um, the 184 at 90 degrees. And here at 90 degrees is the SE8. Now, it's, it is over there. It's hidden in the blackness of the gloom. But um, uh, trust me, that is an SE8 at 90 degrees. As I mentioned, um, there was some discussion about the uh, comparison between the SE8 and the CM4 in the off-axis. And uh, maybe there'll be some more uh, debate here, although I think the, the basic frequency response patterns, if you overlay them, are more similar between the SE8 and the 184. And hey, that's the, um, the fun of doing these tests, just to find out um, what they throw up. So that uh, is the SE8 at 90 degrees off axis. So what have we learned in this comparison between the uh, SE8 and the Neumann? KM184. Well, I think the first thing we've learned is that I think there are now at least two very worthy contenders for your money in the best cheap mic in the world contest. Uh, the SE and uh, the uh, Line Audio CM4, which is uh, uh, we're using for this, um, this segment. And um, I think there's a definite choice. If you um, want, you know, flat as as uh, as East Anglia, then um, maybe the CM4 is for you. If you prefer a bit of rolling Cotswolds at the top end, which is what the uh, Neumann has, then the SE has that too. And um, uh, having said that, the SE then does pile up the advantages. It has uh, pads, it has filters, it has replaceable capsules, it has a much more solid build quality feel. Now, two reservations. One, you never know how good a mic's going to be until you drop it a few times and, you know, use it in different contexts. Somebody's asked me, put it in a boom. Yeah, all that stuff. So um, that you don't decide on a mic's long-term goodness on the basis of a very short YouTube video. And that kind of also applies to the sound. I know it's a strange thing, but some microphones grow on you uh, the SM7B is a good example. When I first heard the SM7B, I thought, what is the fuss about? But that thing has just grown on me and grown on me and grown on me. And other mics, which are initially appealing, maybe over time, over using them in lots of contexts, just slightly, they don't become bad microphones, but they slide down the pecking order. So I'm saying for now, there are at least two best cheap mics in the world, and this is one of them. SE Electronics, what a great job you've done. A big thanks to Ken at Apogee AV here in the UK for being so kind as to um, uh, lend the channel uh, the microphone. I'll put a link to Ken's stuff um, down below. Um, as for you, please subscribe. It does help. Thanks for dropping by. See you soon.